Hello, everyone. We'd like to welcome you to the UC San Diego Global Seminar Family Orientation. My name is Jim Galvin, and I'm the director of the Global Seminar Program, and I'm delighted that so many of you are able to join us this evening. Also on the webinar this evening are my colleagues, the people who compose the Global Seminar team. So we have Tonya Pizer, Cree Howland, and Lisa Armstrong. And this entire team is dedicated and committed to making sure that your sons and daughters have a remarkable educational experience abroad this summer, uh, that they are safe while they're there, and uh, that they come home with a renewed interest in their education and uh, strive for academic and personal excellence. I'd like to tell you just a little bit about the Global Seminar Program. It is going to be our 12th summer, and we have sent over 2,500 students abroad on almost 140 global seminars over the last 11 years. And the students have studied on six continents. Uh, they've studied all different types of topics and subjects, and uh, we brought them all home safe and sound, uh, and we're very proud of that. And we know that uh, safety, finances, academics, communication plans, housing, these are all questions that you have tonight, and we're going to be working to uh, provide you with some answers here. I'd like to start out with a general screen about how we can work together. Um, of course, you are our partners, and we want to make sure that we work together. One of the most important pieces of advice I can give to parents is that this is really a moment when your sons and daughters are going to be developing some new independence. So the, the challenge is something similar to what you've already experienced when you sent them off to college. It's the process of letting go somewhat, but of course, staying in touch. So being supportive, but fostering their independence. And so we'll be talking more about this during the webinar, uh, but uh, we ask you to give your uh, children the chance to grow uh, during this experience. Now, of course, as you probably already learned during freshman year of college, not everything really is a crisis. Uh, if you get an email or a call that the shower isn't working or they're having roommate difficulties, you do not have to try and solve that crisis from 6,000 miles away and 12 time zones. Uh, there will be full-time professional staff on site to help with everything from a leaky shower to someone who has traveler's diarrhea and needs to get to the doctor, uh, to homesickness, uh, to roommate issues. So they're not on their own. If you remember nothing else from this webinar, it is that your sons and daughters are not on their own. They have a support network, and it is comprised of the local uh, on-site professional staff as well as the professor. Uh, the model of the Global Seminar Program is that uh, a UC San Diego professor teaches two courses during the five-week summer session, and these professors love to teach, so they care about students, and they are supported by local staff. So if something comes up, you don't have to solve that problem. You can just say to your son or daughter, you met the on-site staff on the first day at the orientation. Please talk to them about this. Talk to your professor. They're going to solve it for you. Okay, so I want to start right off the top with that. Uh, the next issue is uh, privacy laws. There are some things that we simply are not able to share with parents unless your son or daughter has given us a release of information. This is part of FERPA, the Federal Education Rights Privacy Act. Now, in a crisis, you know, if someone were hit by a car or whatnot, FERPA doesn't apply, we can contact you. The students have given us permission to do that uh, anyway. But for day-to-day -day kinds of issues, 
uh, FERPA does apply. So um, we ask you to set up a communication plan with your son or daughter. Maybe you'll follow along on Facebook to see that they're fine each day, but maybe you don't call them every day. So there are ways to stay in touch, uh, but we are limited uh, by purpose to what we can share. Um, this uh, presentation will be posted to our website. So you don't have to take notes on this. You'll be able to review this uh, at our Global Seminar website. Uh, and uh, the main website under the Family tab is where you can find all of this information. Now, uh, first thing I want to start out with is that in terms of health and safety, we have a network of support in place, uh, far more than any of us would have individually if we were just to go traveling on our own. Uh, again, as I say, these students are not on their own. Um, so the first thing we start with is uh, the U.S. State Department website, travel.state.gov. I encourage all of you to check out this website. Uh, you can look at the country where your son or daughter is going. Uh, they have information there. And, uh, you know, we wouldn't send them abroad if it were considered to be unsafe. State Department rates every country in the world on a scale of one to four, with one being the safest countries and four being basically war zones like Afghanistan and Iraq. So we don't go to countries with fours. Uh, this year, we're only going to countries with ones and twos. And most of Western Europe uh, is either a one or a two. Uh, you know, so it doesn't mean something can't happen, but it's uh, remote. And I want to talk a little bit about this because I noticed that several of you had questions, certainly in the day and age in which we live. People worry about safety of their sons and daughters, as do we. Safety is the highest priority for us. So uh, it's important to know that we've sent more than 2,500 students abroad on global seminars. Everyone's come home. Uh, and the issues that students encounter are really not terrorists or hostage takers or things like this. It's sprained ankles because they were wearing flip-flops going up to the top of the castle and they slipped. Or traveler's diarrhea, that's a big one. Tell your son or daughter to avoid street food and pack comfortable closed-toed shoes with good ankle support. That's about 90% of the problems. Um, if they're going to a country like Greece or Italy or Spain in the summer, those countries are very warm. So the students need to drink water and hydrate. Uh, heat stroke is another issue that students sometimes have. Or uh, sunburn, you know, they're going to be out and about on excursions. And so if they're, you know, dressing casually, make sure they're putting on sunscreen. These are the issues that we encounter. Uh, so I want to reframe the concerns here. Uh, clearly, uh, we tell students uh, to monitor events and Heaven forbid there were to be an earthquake or some other event, you know, our local staff and the professor and our office are going to be reaching out to your sons or daughters. And we have told them that they should let you know that they are safe through the communication plan that you set up. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But on this website, you can see down towards the bottom, there's something called the Enroll in Step. That's the Smart Traveler Enrollment Program. Basically, you're just registering with the State Department to say you are in this country, in this city for these dates. So the U.S. government knows where you are in case there's an emergency. And of course, we know where they are. So it's just an extra level of safety. Now, um, remember that there is always a UC San Diego professor on site, and these professors know these countries. Many of them have taught in the country, done research there, lived there. Some of them were born and raised in these countries. So they wouldn't go if it wasn't safe. Many of our professors bring their spouses and young children. And so they wouldn't do that if they thought it was unsafe. Um, now, there's no such thing as perfect security uh, around the world or even in San Diego. But uh, with prudence, uh, and with common sense, students can stay safe. And I'm going to tell you over the slides ahead how you as parents and family can help uh, reinforce 
what we are telling the students in their pre-departure orientations. But again, remember, uh, there's faculty, there's full-time professional staff in the country, and then students have a pre-departure orientation with us. Uh, they've had it either last month or this month. Uh, and in those pre-departure orientations, they receive information about uh, flying over to the country and who the local staff is and what to do if their plane is delayed. Uh, these types of logistical issues, uh, airport pickups, all of these points are uh, discussed in detail. Uh, the faculty member is there to talk about the coursework, but also to make sure that the students know who the professor is and that the students meet each other so they can recognize each other in the airport. Some students even choose to fly on the same uh, international flight over. So again, uh, all of this is designed to create a cohort so students know uh, who their group is and realize that they are not alone. Now, when the students arrive in country, uh, there is an airport pickup, uh, and we tell them what time to arrive to get that pickup. And if the plane is delayed for some reason, they have instructions on who to call and what to do uh, if they are delayed and miss that uh, group pickup. Um, On-site orientations will take place uh, that first day, and it includes an introduction of the full-time professional staff a full discussion of health and safety issues, what to do, what not to do, uh, cultural taboos, wearing, you know, revealing clothing or things like that, or clothing that would be considered revealing over there might not be here, and such like that. So students hear these things. Uh, they do a walking tour of a local neighborhood, so they see where the supermarket is, or the, the fruit stands, or you know, the, the parks and the theaters and whatnot. So they, they have uh, an orientation uh, to where they are. Now, it's also important to know that uh, if there are issues or concerns along the way, the students can talk to these staff members and the faculty who they will have known and met and they will receive their contact information. So again, they're not alone. Now, uh, the question always comes up about insurance. And so I wanna emphasize that all the students will have study abroad insurance, which covers not only health issues abroad, but emergency evacuations if they should be needed. So on the issue of health, for all these points that we've discussed here, uh, and even up to including you know, a student who uh, was crossing the street and didn't look both ways and got hit by a car, you know, the insurance, uh, the UC study abroad insurance covers that. Um, we had a student years and years ago who had a serious illness, and we were able to medically evacuate her, return her to the U.S. She was fine. She's now graduated and gone on to other things. So we have very well uh, designed insurance. Uh, to support uh, your son or daughter and to provide, you know, for small issues or large issues. Now, uh, we can also handle emergency evacuations. Uh, UC, the UC system works with an organization called World Aware, and this is a private security organization. They have analysts who used to work for the State Department who monitor every country in the world. And, uh, the students, when they sign up for the UC trips insurance, which we have already talked to them about, uh, they will receive updates, text updates on their cell phones if there's an earthquake or there's a bus strike or you know there's serious weather coming in or whatever it may be. So they should stay uh, in tune with World Aware. And you can reinforce that. Uh, and if we did have to fly them out, uh, as we had to do during the Japan earthquake, tsunami, and nuclear disaster a decade ago. We fly in a plane. The students aren't charged anything. Uh, we send people in. Uh, typically, they're former Green Berets or special operations people, and they can get into anything and do anything. And they got all the students and professors out and flew them home, and students finished up their classes remotely. So uh, we hope we never need to do that again, but we have it if we need it. Uh, and that's why you're sending your son or daughter on a UC study abroad program. We do sweat these details. And we have experience keeping students safe. Uh, 
uh, also, you know, a reiteration uh, on the State Department and, you know, following uh, bulletins, uh, not only from state, but also uh, following the local media is smart. If your son or daughter doesn't follow the news now, encourage them to do that through local media. Abroad. Now, how can my son or daughter reduce risks? So the first thing is to make sure to make a connection with the on-site professional staff, the professor and their peers. Um, that way, if they're not feeling well, you know, typically, you know, let's say they wake up and they, they're sick to their stomach, well, their roommates can let the professor and then the study abroad uh, staff on site know, and then they can help right away. Many of our students will travel on the weekends. That's not required, uh, but you know many of them want to. So it's absolutely critical that they tell the staff and the professor where they're going. Uh, so that if on Monday morning, Johnny hasn't come into class, we'll know, oh, Johnny was you know, going from London uh, to Paris this weekend uh, and he's not here, uh, you know, and then we can start searching. Uh, that's, that's very important. And students should always go with other students. And we'll talk more about that buddy system in a moment. The first uh, full day they're in country, uh, they'll be asked to provide their cell phone number to the local staff. And uh, in terms of communication, many students will pick up, uh, will just rent a cheap uh, cell phone in country. But increasingly, many students are activating an international calling plan on their iPhone. Uh, and you can call your a telecom provider and say, I'm going to be abroad for five weeks or more, and here are the dates. Uh, is there an international plan? And we'll talk more about those in a minute. But uh, it's very important that students stay in touch. They can't just tune out, uh, they need to uh, stay in touch. Um, they should keep their abroad address on them. And in some cases, they've already received their housing. In other cases, we are still in the process of reserving uh, the housing, and that will be sent to them before departure. So they will they will know that. So if they're in a cab and they uh, have a cabbie who doesn't speak English, they can have the address written down, and they can show it to the cab driver, and the cabbie can take them home. If need be. Another thing: uh, don't wear the wrong clothing. You know, we all love our country, but it's best in this day and age not to wear a big t-shirt that says USA or American flags or San Diego or other things. Just wear regular clothing without a lot of Western branding on it. Uh, it just lowers your profile, and it's really not that there's violent crime uh, in these places. It's really more pickpocketing uh, and uh, theft. And so, you know, you don't want to be walking around with uh, your nose in the iPhone and with earbuds in and being just oblivious. Uh, you need to be aware of your surroundings. Um, not scared of your surroundings, but just aware. Now, other things that they can do, know the location of U.S. consulates. That's really easy to do. You can just search that online and you'll, you'll know where they are. Register with the STEP program. That's the State Department Traveler program. It takes five minutes, so then the U.S. government knows where they are. Uh, scan and email copies of passport and other documents uh, to themselves. That way, if these things get stolen, uh, they can recreate them very quickly. Stick to uh, the group. Don't go off alone. That's absolutely critical. Um, you know, groups are always uh, a safer place to be. And finally, be smart about high-risk activities. They should avoid extreme sports like bungee jumping. You know, if they wouldn't handle a rattlesnake in San Diego, they shouldn't be handling snakes or, you know, dealing with wild animals abroad. Um, and finally, political demonstrations. I know we have some political science majors out there, and I'm sure they're very interested in this, but uh, it's very important to keep a low profile uh, and not to attend demonstrations or, uh, to really engage in uh, political commentary. There was one question about uh, son or daughter going to Hong Kong and concerns about the Chinese government. Well, uh, you know, let's face it, China is a one-party state, and so they should not talk uh, in negative terms uh, or positive terms or any real terms about the Chinese government while they're there because they're a guest in the country. 
So, you know, just uh, be smart about these things. Doesn't mean they can't have views and perspectives, but just don't post them all over social media. Um, so that's common sense. Now, uh, most other uh, countries are, are full democracies, so this is not a problem, but we're currently having some, you know, diplomatic and economic challenges with the People's Republic of China. So it's still safe to go there, just don't be foolish about it. Personal safety. Okay, so learn about uh, attitudes, taboos, and cultural practices regarding dating. Let's face it, the rest of the world often forms opinions about the United States based on Hollywood movies. And so if a student is wearing really revealing, skimpy California clothing, which would be fine here on a modern college campus, it might be sending a very different message to people in another country, a message that the student does not intend to be sending. But, you know, that's how problems occur. So, you know, dress more cautiously, more conservatively. Uh, that's, that's important. Uh, respect other cultures in which dress codes may apply. For example, in many locations, we may be taking students through museums or sometimes religious sites. And, you know, you just can't wear short shorts and flip flops and tank tops and, you know, uh, basketball board shorts. You know, you want to wear uh, uh, business casual. Uh, so they should pack something like that. Again, we constantly emphasize with the students, practice the buddy system, don't go out alone. Uh, they should watch out for offers from strangers. You know, you probably sat them down before they went off to their freshman year of college and said something similar. So I uh, just reiterate that. Um, notify uh, the study center about any weekend travel and always carry that study abroad insurance card with them. So if they get sick, they can show that card if they go to the clinic. And in many cases, the way it works overseas is that they will be asked to pay for the service up front, and then they will uh, uh, submit a claim. And so that's uh, very important to realize that um, it is a little bit different abroad. But uh, remember that for the, the, the vast, vast majority of items, you know, the, the bug bite that gets infected, uh, the uh, traveler's diarrhea, uh, healthcare costs around the world are much, 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 much lower than in the United States. So uh, that's, that's just critical to uh, understand. And again, most students never have a problem. So I just want to contextualize this for you. Now, the communication plan, I alluded to this earlier, but I want to spend a little bit of time on it. Set up this plan in advance with your child. How are you going to communicate with her? Uh, will you be watching her Facebook posts each day? Will you drop a quick email each day or a couple of times a week? Uh, do you want to have a Zoom or a Skype uh, call? You're all on Zoom right now. Uh, it's very good, reliable, stable. Uh, that's a terrific way to stay in touch. Maybe not every day, uh, but a great way to stay in touch. Um, and this one's really critical. Be careful about overusing cell phones due to different billing practices overseas. You know, just because your cell phone plan is a flat rate for as many texts and minutes uh, in the United States, that's not the practice overseas. So if a student is running up hundreds of minutes of uh, phone calling or texting, they may get charged hundreds of dollars or euros or whatever it may be. So find out before they go abroad what the costs are, but also really try to avoid using cell phones for calls. Use the Facebook, the email, and the Zoom. That's far better. And reiterate that, you know, the student should be following current events, you know, not reading 43 pages of newspaper, but, you know, if there's a major crisis of some kind or another in that country, their first thought should be send an email home to mom and dad to say, I'm okay. And then, of course, contact the professor and study abroad staff, uh, both overseas and here, just saying, I'm okay and I'm in the student housing. Um, so, we, we plan for these emergencies, but, uh, you know, uh, these rarely, rarely happen. Okay, insurance and theft. 
as I indicated before, the, the biggest challenge that our students face, other than flip-flops, is just petty theft. And so this is really important. If uh, you can sit down with them and say, don't bring uh, irreplaceable family heirlooms, you know, grandma's earrings, leave those at home. You know, if you were to lose it, is it irreplaceable? Leave all of that stuff at home. Uh, and then there are some things like very, very expensive cameras, the big SLRs with the zoom lenses and all of that, that just marks them as a tourist. You know, use the uh, camera on their cell phone uh, for pictures. Uh, check the personal property insurance. You know, make sure if they're bringing a laptop, computer, and whatnot, that uh, the students' um, items are covered while they're abroad. Know what the deductibles are. Um, keep valuables safe by using money belts. Keep purses zipped and carry them in front. Keep backpacks zipped and carry them in front through crowded terminals and metros because the, the pickpockets are so adept at quickly unzipping something, it's a quick snatch and grab. So uh, that's the thing to be careful of. When I walk through a very crowded uh, plaza or airport, I put my wallet in my front pocket and I put my hand over the wallet and I don't take my hand out of my wallet. And if someone bumps me or jostles me, it may be innocent or it may be an attempted pickpocket. And so, you know, I'm not gonna take my hand out of that pocket, right? So there's common sense things that you can do uh, just to make sure that you're not a victim of theft. Okay, I'm going to turn to health and well-being now. And um, uh, first thing that uh, I encourage uh, students to do is to make an emergency card uh, similar to this one. Uh, they, they can type it up, it can be a sheet of paper, whatever, and just keep that on them. Uh, so that's, uh, that's a helpful um, resource. And if the student takes prescriptions, they should bring enough to last the entire five weeks, or if they're traveling for a few weeks afterwards, enough for that. Bring the prescription along and make sure the pills are all in the original bottle. One year, uh, we had a student who was packing, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but uh, they had so much stuff in the suitcase that they couldn't fit his medication. So uh, the student decided to pour all the pills into one Ziploc bag and zip it up. Well, he knew which pills he had to take at what time, but the security agents at the airport had a lot of questions for him. So you don't want to do something foolish like that. Uh, bring the prescriptions in the original bottles. And if they're taking a controlled substance or something, uh, you know, make sure that that medication is actually legal to bring into the country. Uh, there are some psychological medications uh, that are very important, uh, but they may not uh, be allowed into a country. So it's important to check on that first. Now, I wanna talk about the health and evacuation insurance because the Global Seminar students will have this mandatory insurance. Uh, and many of our study abroad partners also have similar insurance. So they're in effect, in most cases, double covered. Uh, we really wanna make sure they're safe. Now we've told your sons and daughters repeatedly that they need to sign up for the free UC uh, insurance. It takes five minutes. They enter in their travel dates, the airport they're leaving in California and where they're going abroad and then back. Very simple. And at the end of that process, they print out an insurance card that looks like this. They should keep that in their purse or wallet at all times, and they should scan it uh, and send it as a copy to them so that if they were to lose it, uh, they could uh, easily regenerate it from email. Now, Upon arrival, the students will have the airport pickup if they arrive during the window, the proper window, and we've told them what that is. And it can vary from city to city, so you can ask your son or daughter about that. You can say, have you been through your pre-departure orientation? Do you have your handbook with information? And you can look it over with them. Uh, many times the handbook may be in electronic format, uh, so your son or daughter can share that with you. Uh, but after they get picked up, they will be brought in uh, to the center of the city. They'll get their housing, and then uh, typically they'll have a health and safety orientation and we're walking tour the city. Uh, they'll meet the full-time professional staff. They will get that person's emergency contact information, which they should put into their purse or wallet. Uh, they can call that person for assistance with emergencies, illnesses, housing problems, homesickness, whatever it may be. 
roommate problems, you name it. Also, they should be aware that as their body adjusts to a new environment, uh, it may be fighting new germs, and so they may get sick. It's often common to pick something up on the flight over, and so they should really eat a good balanced diet and get adequate sleep. Uh, you know, as exciting as this new location is, they shouldn't go out all night and just be, you know, indestructible. They should get their sleep and get adjusted. They should follow the local news. So uh, be aware if there's, uh, you know, an earthquake or geopolitical issue or a bus strike or whatever the case may be. Uh, follow good health and safety practices and remember that such practices may be different abroad. You know, there are some places uh, where uh, the public water systems are not as reliable as others. So, for example, there are some countries around the world where, you know, you would use bottled water to brush your teeth. Um, and, you know, it's not in uh, most of the locations where we're going. Um, so that's just something to be aware of. And they'll be told that uh, with their uh, on-site orientation if there are you know, such issues to be aware of. Uh, and again, they should bring a copy of prescriptions and medications in the original uh, container. All right, alcohol and drugs. This is really important. Uh, students should be aware that there are different laws and practices regarding alcohol and drugs abroad. For example, American style binge drinking is not cool around the world. Unfortunately, uh, there have been some American college students over the years who go abroad and get terribly drunk and they're loud and obnoxious and sick in the sidewalks or the cafes and the locals uh, form a, a negative opinion. So we tell the students not to do that, to be good ambassadors, to be responsible and respectful. They're guests in this country after all, uh, well abroad. And so uh, they'll all be legally eligible to drink alcohol in the countries. Uh, this year, all of our countries, it's a legal drinking age of 18. So we say that if they choose to drink alcohol, you know, do it in moderation, have a drink, not eight drinks, you know. And uh, so you can have that conversation with your sons and daughters before they go abroad. We also will say that, you know, about a third of the UCSD students don't choose to consume alcohol. So they don't have to start, you know, consuming alcohol while they're abroad. Uh, they can say, no, I don't care for any. Um, excessive drinking is something we do worry about because it places a student at risk for unwanted sexual advances in a club or sexual assault or uh, getting lost, or you know, walking into a street and getting hit by a car. Uh, pedestrians don't have anywhere near the same rights abroad as they do in the United States. So uh, it's very important that they look both ways. And if that car is speeding at them, that car may not stop. So you know they don't wanna be inebriated and, and crossing streets. Uh, we've had uh, students get into trouble that way. So common sense stuff. Uh, now, on the issue of drugs, this is, this is far more serious. Most countries around the world have not legalized marijuana. So even though California has, uh, abroad it can result in major jail time. And so they should not do illegal drugs uh, or any kinds of drugs while abroad. If they are thrown in prison, we cannot get them out of prison. Uh, you know, the U.S. Constitution does not apply abroad. That shocks a lot of people, but every country has their own laws and own constitution. And so they need to be on their best behavior. This is not, uh, you know, wild party time. Uh, this is an academic program, a rigorous one at that. We have high standards and we expect them to be good ambassadors and to use common sense. And so we ask you to reiterate that uh, with your sons and daughters. And for the most part, we, we have no problems uh, abroad. So uh, we just want them to be aware. Now, uh, adjusting uh, overseas, understanding culture, and then we'll talk about some other logistics. So culture shock. Uh, you should expect that your son or daughter will have some ups and downs. This is common. 
uh, when they went off to college, there were ups and downs as well. So you've already been through this once. Um, and you realize that some days things may, they may be on the top of the world and then the next day that there may be an issue and they feel very stressed out and they're not enthusiastic. But again, remember, not everything is a crisis. Uh, refer them to speak to the on-site staff and the faculty member. Um, now, if something really is serious, if they're depressed or they're feeling withdrawn or they're just overwhelmed, there are counselors available, so they need to reach out for help. Uh, so they need to say something. If they need assistance, uh, they should talk to the faculty member, they should talk to the on-site professional staff. And so if, they, if your sons and daughters are expressing this to you, please reiterate what I've just said. Seek out help and it will be provided. Now, uh, I want to shift gears a little bit and start talking about some nuts and bolts issues. And one of them that we get a lot of is pre-departure planning. So uh, we are providing uh, materials to the students about everything from packing to uh, airport pickups uh, to uh, logistics and country. And these are coming at the orientations. Now, many of the orientations have already happened, but several are still to come. So the best thing you can do is just ask your son or daughter, have you had your orientation yet? Or if you haven't, when are you going to have it? And then uh, after that, they can share the materials that they've been given with you. Now, sometimes uh, housing in, in some locations, it takes longer to get that booked and reserved. So if we don't yet have the housing information, we will before they go abroad and that will be communicated to your son or daughter. And so you can just ask them uh, to share that with you. Now, creating a packing list is very important. And I have one question here, of course, we don't attribute it, but uh, you know, uh, the, the parent says, um, my daughter needs some information about packing light uh, and it's difficult to, to get that through. So. Uh, the best advice I can give you on packing is to say to your son or daughter, you know, while you're over there, you're probably going to want to buy some things. You know, they have shirts and jeans and hats and all of that abroad, uh, so you don't need to bring it all with you. So um, lay out what you think you need, uh, double check it, and then put half of it back in the closet. Uh, you know, go with uh, bags that are about half full, and then you know they'll they'll buy other things. Now. Uh, that's just a rough rule of thumb, uh, but uh, it, it often works uh, pretty well. Remember that if they're going to, you know, the United Kingdom or Ireland, uh, for example, it rains in the summer there, unlike San Diego. So they should pack an umbrella and have a, you know, a rain slicker to wear uh, because, you know, it rains. Uh, they have weather overseas. Uh, remember when you leave for the airport, to bring the plane tickets, the passport, and a visa if the visa is needed. Um, that's absolutely critical. They can't get on the plane without those things. Uh, have the uh, study abroad uh, uh, info in their luggage. So if their plane is delayed and they are sitting in an airport lounge in Newark, New Jersey, waiting to get a new flight uh, and uh, their luggage uh, is has been checked through you know they, they may not be able to go into their check baggage so they should have it in their carry-on or type it into their iphone so that they can call the, the study abroad number with the local partner or provider overseas to say my flight has been delayed uh, i'm going to be on flight you know delta flight 127 and i'll be arriving at midnight uh, what should i do and then that will be uh, uh, communicated uh, to the on-site staff and they will say, uh, you know, get a taxi at, uh, you know, the main terminal and take it to the following address and, you know, uh, you'll be led into the house, whatever it may be. Now, the next thing, uh, bring some cash uh, along. So uh, go to your bank or your credit union or wherever you get foreign currency uh, and bring the equivalent of about $100 in local currency and do it in small bills. Uh, the reason we say this is because most countries around the world are not as um, 
dependent on credit cards. So they often use cash, especially smaller outfits or taxi services or whatnot. So if your son or daughter arrives uh, late because the plane was delayed, and they need to get a taxi and maybe grab a quick meal or something in an airport, uh, having that amount of cash will allow them to do it if they need to. Now, on the subject of money, uh, we ask that you sit down with your son or daughter and make a budget. Uh, and our website for each global seminar has a, a budget sheet on it, and your son or daughter can show that to you. So make the budget and stick to it. Um, so uh, cell phone use, we've already talked about this. They should use internet services like Zoom or WhatsApp and whatnot instead of calling long distance, that's too expensive. Uh, if students will be using credit cards or an ATM card, call that credit card company or the bank or credit union well before departure and let the bank know, uh, you know we're gonna be in Tokyo from this state to that date. And the reason we do that is so that when they put their card into the ATM machine, the ATM machine understands that this is okay. The card hasn't been stolen, you know. So double check about a week after you make that initial call to make sure it's in the bank's system. Uh, that's important. Uh, find out also what the local currency conversion rate is. Um, and learn local customs uh, regarding tipping and taxes. Many countries include a tip right in the bill, and that's becoming a little more common in the U.S. as well now. But uh, you don't want to have tip included in the bill and then tip again. You know, I mean, the servers will be thrilled, but you know, you want to be careful on that. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is that uh, when they go out to eat, you know, here in the United States, we're used to putting down eight credit cards and the server will figure it out. That's often not done and not okay and not acceptable overseas. So that's why students should carry cash with them so then they can uh, you know, put the correct amount in and then send it on. Another thing about uh, money uh, to keep in mind is that um, ask your bank or credit union if there's a local bank in country where they have an arrangement so, you know, for example, uh, you know, XYZ Bank in the United States has an arrangement with, you know, ABC Bank in Europe, and there's no credit card fee. Uh, you know, that's the kind of thing you could ask them. But even if there is, uh, you know, it's one, two, or three percent. It's not enormous. And uh, you know, it's, in a way, it's the kind of the cost of doing business. I when I travel, I will only take out the equivalent of about 100 US dollars in local currency uh, at a time. Because if I'm pickpocketed, I don't want to lose the equivalent of $500 or something. You know, if I were trying to save five or 10 bucks in ATM fees and I lost 500, that would be crazy. So don't be penny wise, pound foolish. Uh, now, uh, turning to logistics. Um, again, we have these uh, local partners and they provide information prior to departure as well as on-site support. So pre-departure materials include the orientation materials, information about housing, safety, culture, also airport pickup, cell phones, and what to pack. So this, the students will receive all of that prior to departure, and you can ask them about it. And it varies from country to country, so uh, we don't have the time uh, to go into the, the, the details of 16 different programs on this webinar. But again, just ask your sons and daughters. That information uh, is part of the pre-departure process. And then once they're on site, again, reiterating, they'll have an on-site orientation, a walking tour of the local neighborhood. They'll have ongoing support from everything from leaky faucets to doctor visits if need be. Um, they will know who to inform about weekend travel plans. And in fact, they can even ask the local partner because there's expertise. You know, I want to go to the next city over, what bus should I take or what train is best? Or what should I see this weekend, uh, you know, in terms of the local music scene? All of those things can be provided to them. And we can uh, use your support uh, if your son or daughter is somewhat homesick or experiencing culture shock, uh, you don't have to solve that problem. 
just ask your son or daughter to reach out to the local staff and the local professor so that they can receive help, okay? Now, I wanna spend just a little bit of time on academics. Um, one of the things we're proudest of about the Global Seminar Program is that these are rigorous academic study abroad experiences, not vacations. So the students will have some fun. They'll often have some three-day weekends in there, but uh, they should study and they should prepare because they are going to be taking two courses, uh, uh, and each of these courses is four UC San Diego units. Um, the courses and the grades appear on the UC San Diego official transcript like everything else. So, you know, this, is, um, this has been communicated repeatedly and, uh, you know, it's important to reiterate that. They're there to study first and foremost. Now, they need to order their books and course materials in advance and pick them up before departure. They can't get them sent to Rome or wherever, okay? So uh, they should pick it up before they leave campus in the spring. And in the orientations, the professors are telling the students what books to order and everything, so this is not a mystery. Uh, but if you uh, typically work with your son or daughter on this, you know, be sure to poke them and say, have you picked up your books and materials? Uh, you know, that's, that's helpful for, for everybody. One of the advantages of global seminars is that, that they're small. Uh, class sizes typically range from about 15 to 28 students and the students take both classes together so they know each other very well. These are group discussion based programs with lots of in-class participation. Um, so more of the grade is based on participation than in you know, lecture hall classes on campus that might have 100 students in. So they need to keep up with the reading, uh, stay up with the assignments, um, that's very important. Um, now there will be educational excursions outside the classroom that are integrated into the curriculum. We have listed those on the website, so you can you know, have your son or daughter point you to the proper uh, website for their global seminar, and you can read all about it. It's all there. So students should do the reading on time, get their assignments in. They need to balance studying with exploration. I personally recommend that students do the reading before they go abroad, or at least some of the reading, so that they can hit the ground running. And also, uh, you can help us out by reiterating that, you know, if they have to go online to do research or submit a paper, you know, internet access abroad is nowhere near as reliable as in California. I mean, we have probably the best internet access anywhere. Even places like Western Europe or Japan, the internet goes down more frequently. So if your son or daughter is a procrastinator, please ask them to uh, try to get their work done before the last minute. Uh, because, you know, if the internet isn't working at 2 a.m. Uh, before, uh, you know, the assignments due the next morning at 8 a.m., uh, you know, they're going to have trouble. So uh, that's why they need to stay on task. Also, if the student is feeling a little bit behind, uh, they should ask the professor for assistance. These are small classes, and we're really striving to create a small college experience where the students and the professors interact closely. So this is not an impersonal experience. They should feel free to ask for assistance. And our professors love to teach, so this is not an imposition on them. Now, um, one of the things I want to emphasize is that while this is a five-week study abroad program, the benefits last a lifetime. So I'd like to tell you just a little bit about the return on investment. 35%, or excuse me, 38% of our UC San Diego alumni uh, have responded in surveys that they got their first job uh, in part from their study abroad experience. Um, so this is something that really stands out. Uh, it's uh, all about widely transferable skills, communication, independence, maturity, creative thinking. Um, over 99% of our study abroad alumni going back 40 years said they developed these skills and they use them in the workplace. It's also important to know that only about 5% of U.S. college students study abroad. We're including community colleges in that. Um, so employers and graduate schools really value uh, this experience, and it's something that they can put on their resumes and in cover letters and discuss in interviews uh, long after uh, they have completed this program. So uh, for career advice, one of the things that you can do upon their return 
is to encourage them to visit our career center, uh, to internationalize the resume, to develop that 30 second elevator speech about why they should be hired for this company or admitted to graduate school and study abroad can be a part of that. Discuss the key skills they developed and illustrate a few examples uh, from their broad experience. So many students uh, will journal about the impact they've had, you know, during and then even after. Um, our faculty are ongoing resources. So encourage your sons and daughters to stay in touch with the Global Seminar faculty member, even after the program. Uh, many of our students will take additional courses with the professor or become an undergraduate research assistant, teaching assistant. Uh, if they've worked hard and done well in the class, they may very well be able to uh, get a letter of recommendation, actually a very good letter uh, from a faculty member because these classes are so small that the professors really get to know them and that's the best kind of uh, letter. Um, so our faculty are also happy to provide mentoring and advice about graduate schools or majors or coursework. In fact, I was just talking to one of our professors who is in touch with students he taught on a global seminar over 10 years ago. Some of them have finished graduate school and are you know, starting careers as professors and whatnot, and he stayed in touch with them. So uh, this is really something we strongly emphasize. This is part of the ongoing return on investment from study abroad. Now, uh, another area where we ask for your partnership is to help your sons and daughters adjust when they return. Be prepared for some culture shock when they return. Um, you know, uh, everything about France may have been absolutely wonderful, and now they're back in the U.S., and the public transit isn't as good, and the croissants aren't as good, and the coffee isn't as good, and, you know, uh, they may just have a little bit of time readjusting. So be patient. Listen to their stories. Understand the good and the challenges, uh, and encourage them. Uh, to think about the impact of this. They may want to talk to you about changes in their major or their career direction or priorities or personal views or perspectives. Uh, this is one of the most impactful experiences that our college students engage in. So uh, please feel free to, you know, listen to them not only upon their immediate return, but these conversations can continue over the months and even years ahead. Uh, we encourage students to stay connected with international involvement back on campus. There's the International House, which is a, a residence hall, half U.S., half international students uh, that always has cultural events going on. We have events through the Study Abroad Office for returnees. There are many, many groups and community service opportunities on and off campus, which have an international component to them. Students can apply for a job in our office to become a student assistant. And many of them will actually go abroad again for study abroad or an internship. So uh, we're here to help them. Now, um, I've tried to incorporate many of your questions as uh, part of my uh, talk this evening. And so uh, I hope that this uh, has been helpful. Um, we have, uh, we've got very experienced faculty who uh, we'll work closely with the on-site staff uh, to make sure that this is a, a positive experience for them. Now, there are a few questions uh, that were submitted that I'd like to uh, pull out. One of them asked about housing and uh, bed checks and whatnot. Well, you know, these are adults, so we don't do bed checks for students in the residence halls on campus, so we don't do that abroad either. But um, if a student is having any kind of difficulty with their housing, we encourage them to, to ask. Um, and, you know, they should keep their door locked. Uh, they should do prudent things that they would do here on campus, that they would do abroad. But uh, we make sure that the housing is, uh, you know, very good, clean, safe, um, and whatnot. Uh, what items are provided? Uh, this will vary. Uh, but uh, if they're going to be in an apartment, uh, usually the cooking supplies uh, are provided, um, but a student might need to bring a towel, but not sheets. Those kinds of country by country differences 
are, are fully spelled out in the pre-departure materials. So I'm not going to try and answer individual questions about particular countries. Just ask your son or daughter about that kind of thing. Um, the distance from the uh, classroom uh, to their residences, that will be explained. They, they will see how that uh, uh, layout uh, occurs. Usually our students are living uh, near public transportation or in some neighborhoods, it's all within uh, 15 to 20 minutes of walking. Um, another question, uh, safety for a female who expects to go running every morning. What I would encourage uh, students to do is always follow the buddy system. So um, she's going to have many new friends. There's gotta be at least one other person who jogs, so you know they could jog together. They can also ask the full-time professional on-site staff you know, if I jog down the main street, uh, you know, in the avenue uh, or through the main park, you know, is that a safe thing to do? And that will be that will be explained to you. Uh, there's another question about uh, immunizations. Um, most of the students are going to places, whether it's Western Europe or Japan or whatnot, that you know, don't require, you know, malaria vaccinations or whatnot. Um, but uh, if a student uh, is going to a location with more communicable diseases or whatnot, they have gone through a health clearance process and have been told by the travel clinic uh, what to do and what to bring. And if they've needed immunizations, they've been told that. So you should ask your son or daughter about that. Um, let's see. Someone asked, will the students ever be alone? Um, you know, not unless they want to be. I mean, uh, typically we encourage students on their free time to do group activities. Now, it may not be with 10 students, but maybe it's with at least one other friend. Um, so uh, that's, that's important to know. But they'll have class each week, they'll have excursions, and they always have the 24-7 number to call uh, staff, and they'll have the faculty members' contact information, too. Uh, local transportation. Um, most of our locations, we provide a local transit pass. So in Paris, they'll have a, a subway card. In London, they'll have a subway card. And they can ride those subways. And you know, it's not like New York City. Uh, the, 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 I've ridden the subways in London and, and uh, Paris, and they're clean, they're safe, and uh, middle-class people take them all the time. So uh, we wouldn't provide them with transit passes if, if it wasn't you know, a thing that the locals do all the time. Most places around the world, people don't drive to work. They'll take public transit, uh, and so our students will too. Um, Let's see. Uh, someone's asking about food expenses. You know, on our uh, budget page for each global seminar, we have an estimate section for food. And typically, uh, students are expected to spend maybe $100 a week, maybe a little bit more if it's an expensive city. Um, we encourage students, if they're uh, you know, living in a place with a kitchen uh, to buy their food at the local markets. And uh, of course, we know they'll go out for dinner from time to time, but, you know, they can ask the local staff about inexpensive but good local restaurants. Don't go to the tourist traps because they'll be charged three times as much and the food won't be as good. Um, let's see, someone's asking about the course syllabi. Well, those are posted to the website, so you can go and read more about the courses if you want. Please do know that our faculty uh, will sometimes change or modify the syllabus a little bit um, when they arrive in country, so uh, that is, uh, that's fairly common. Uh, the student grades, when will, when will the grades be reported? Our faculty submit grades uh, in 48 hours after the final is taken. So uh, those grades are UCSD grades like any other and they will appear on their uh, transcript um, and count towards graduate school and whatnot. 
Um, well, I see that we're uh, coming to the end of our time here today. So I wanna thank all of you uh, for being on this call. Uh, we sincerely appreciate your partnership and we are committed to working with you to make sure that your sons and daughters have a safe, rewarding, and uh, intellectually stimulating experience abroad. And uh, if we can ever be of uh, help or assistance, uh, we are happy to help you, of course, within the context of the privacy laws. Um, and of course, if your sons and daughters have questions uh, prior to departure, during the program or after return, uh, Tonya, Cree, Lisa, and I are here uh, to assist. So again, many thanks for participating in this webinar. And remember, we will be archiving this under the family tab on the uh, Study Abroad website. So thank you all very much and have a good evening.